describe myself as a designer who can program in 20 languages. I still don't like to make eye contact. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But um, you know, it, it, you learn that a certain amount is required mm -hmm. to have a conversation with an all person. Yep. And you learn right. scripts and you learn other things. Etc. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so hi everyone, welcome to today's Aspie interview. I'm here with my friend Damien, who is a web developer who found out he's on the spectrum a couple of years back. So um, I thought I'd start with the first question that I like to ask people, uh, which is, what is something you like about being on the autism spectrum? Mm. I think for me personally, it's, um, I, the, the level of focus I have, uh, being able to find problems where other people just problems <laughs> solutions <laughs> problems problems where I can't speak. Um, it's the solutions where other people find problems, I guess. Okay. So it's the thinking outside the square. It's the yeah, just just being able to sit there and and problem solve, I guess. So I trained as a designer mm -hmm. and self-taught as a programmer. So not many people that can design can program. You mean like graphic design? Graphic design, yep. yeah, yeah. So graphic design, 3D modeling, art, animation, all that kind of stuff is, is where I began. Uh, and then picking up programming and, and doing all that. So I guess, yeah, uh, I've always, I guess it's what you always hope that there's something more special about yourself. Maybe you've got a secret, I think I've said this before, a secret superpower. Secret superpower. Yeah. And um, yeah, for me, it's um, revealed as being autism. It's like, um, I know it doesn't always work out that way, but describe myself as a designer who can program in 20 languages. You know, it's kind of that, uh, it's taken me ages when people say, what do you do? It's like, that's such a broad question. So you always had that kind of feeling that there was a superpower in there and it never really had a name. Yeah. And now it has a name. Yeah. Yeah. I knew it was something that was blocking my communication level. <laughs> and I mean, once when I was diagnosed with autism um, and someone said to me, oh, I didn't want to suggest that maybe that's what you've got because I thought you might be offended. And well, listen, I'm like, it explains who I am. It's, it's like everything now makes sense. So, yeah, for me it was like... It made everything it was, make sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, And you mentioned social stuff? Yeah, social stuff, not so good. Not so good? <laughs> <laughs> the, um, uh, the kind of running joke that I had was, um, um, I've got a really high IQ, but I can't tell you about it. Okay. Um, you know, I don't think that I've got anything to offer. So therefore, I find it bizarre that someone would want to talk to me. Okay. So that's that's probably socially, socially maybe self confidence maybe a bit, which is weird because a lot of people say that the things that I can do nobody else can do. Yeah. So um, you know I need to learn a new programming language. So, and this kind of dates me a bit, but <laughs> I'll read it. I'll read a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, and then I can program in that language. Okay. So for so, the people listening at home, what's a book? A book. Yeah. <laughs> um, back in the day, we had these pieces of paper that were bound together. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> there was no internet back then. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so much easier now. So despite your skills in those areas, mm. you still had confidence issues in social things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think you know I. Um, I do struggle with uh, like social environments, hard as. Um, I, th I think, you know, as I've said before, if you're, <laughs> if you're given the choice of going to a social event where you don't know anybody or cutting off your arm, mm -hmm. it's cut off the arm. Mm -hmm. It's like anxiety levels and things like that. So. Uh, it's not that I don't like to communicate, it's that I struggle with knowing what to say. Mm -hmm. But I, I do try to think of things like, today's Monday or Tuesday, so if I haven't spoken to this particular person this week yet, if it's Monday and Tuesday, I can say, how was your weekend? Okay, yeah. <laughs> so you can kind of, it, it's, 
is to that level of uh, what do I say in this scenario? Um, yeah, and trying to figure it out that way. So it is a bit challenging. And this is probably where a lot of things come from for me, where it's, um, I do a great job, I do it quickly, yeah. I deliver it under budget, ahead yeah. of time, but apparently my communication isn't very good, therefore I get marked below everyone else. And I had a manager overall, in, overall yeah. yeah. And I had a manager in a meeting say, you know, basically we need to mark somebody below. You're an easy target. We're marking you. What do you think of that? I'm like, do what you do what you will. Yeah. It's like, what can I say to change that? Yeah. You know, because you've already made up your mind. Yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe sometimes um, I, I can't. I can't uh, argue my point. Um, mm. Or um, a lot of times I, I do find it hard to express emotion. So, and that's been some things that have said to me in the past. And how do you deal in this scenario? Or, or um, well, how do you feel about this? It's like, unless it's to do with computers, I probably don't show any outward <laughs> emotion. I tend to let people know up front. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I apologize if I offend you, because I probably don't mean it. Yeah. Um, but uh, this is this, and this is, this is, and, you know, and, and, go, and go ahead and say something. And you look. found that strategy usually works? I have learned since the, that's the way that I kind of operate, yeah. that works. Okay. Um, so I come into a new business where nobody knows me, nobody has any idea, and I'll come out and say, and I'll say it to certain people, obviously not get in front of the company and say, I have autism. Yeah. Uh, but. I let my managers know, I let maybe my team know. And you know, if I'm, I'm managing people and I come out and I say something blunt, I don't want them to be offended. Yeah. It's just, it's the way it is. Um, mm. So on something you said before about how you frame difficult conversations, mm. um, I thought that was a really good way of dealing with the fact that it's hard to be nuanced. So by framing mm. everything in advance, mm. at least people know what to expect. Yeah. And it sounds like you do that with your whole personality. Mm. Like, so you're about to meet me and yeah. I just want to frame, yeah. this is probably what you're going to expect. Um, yeah. Which, it, is, which is really interesting because for, for yeah. a lot of people, knowing when and how to disclose and what to disclose and what, you know, is mm. a really big thing, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not like, it's, it's finding the point where to do it. I might be working with someone and, and I'm about to say something that could be taken that way. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking through my head, okay, do they know this is the way that I operate? Um, how do they operate? And try to then find you know, the right point to say mm -hmm. something. Um, yeah. And do you use the word mm -hmm. autism when you're explaining that? Because you could very easily <clears throat> say, look, sorry, I'm, I can be really blunt. Yep. I have a, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a particular um, phrase which is my brain wiring. Okay. Uh, the way I'm wired is yes. this happens okay. type thing. But I'll, I'll tell people I've got Asperger's or because they may know what that is more than high functioning autism or, yeah. you know, yeah. so it, it, it's such a big word. Yeah. 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 Rain man. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, so generally um, it depends how it goes. A lot, of, a lot of the time, if I'm in general conversation, I won't say because of my autism, I do this. <clears throat> uh, but I might, I'll probably most definitely say, because of the way that I'm wired, okay. I go about it this way. And for me, that kind of seems like a bit more of a easier way to bring it into a normal conversation without people labeling straight away going, autism, ah. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, not and, that I'm embarrassed. And I know I do that a lot easier. too, in the sense of, I just constantly explain about myself, for your information, this mm -hmm. is going to help both of us if you know this little thing about me, and mm -hmm. then then they can join the dots and figure out the yeah. whole Asperger's thing, Asperger's thing later. Yeah. So is there anything that you wish the world knew about yourself or about autism in general? Um, I guess for me, it's the biggest thing that I've learned in, in this short period of my journey, I guess, is um, people with autism think differently, think outside the square. In the future, when you hand in your resume and it says, if it does, autism, 
Yeah. It's actually a badge of honor. Yeah. It's a, we need this person in our team because everyone else thinks the same way. We need somebody that thinks outside the square. You can't manage somebody on the spectrum the same way as you do somebody that's not. Um, yeah. That's clearly from my previous managers saying, you know, everything's fantastic, you're wonderful, you're amazing, but you can't communicate the same way as everybody else, therefore you're below average, um, which eventually actually got turned over by one of the higher ups saying, that's rubbish. Okay. <laughs> um, so, um, so yeah, it was kind of, I, I think we're still at that point where we try to put everybody into the same box. So what you'd like the world to know is that mm. people on the spectrum need to be managed differently. And if we're managed well, we are a massive asset to any team. Absolutely. 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 Awesome. Good message. Mm. Thanks, Damien. Mm. <laughs> um, so another thing that I think people might be interested in mm. um, is you've, you had a reasonably late diagnosis mm. at the age of 40, 40 mm. which is you know, later in life compared to being in primary school or high school yes. or something like that. Do you want to say a little <laughs> bit about um, what prompted that or how that was for you? Because mm. there, there might be people who are considering if they're on the spectrum themselves yeah, or sure. maybe they've had a, di a, a recent diagnosis themselves. Mm. Um, so I spend a, a reasonable amount of money um, saw a psychiatrist, saw a psychologist, did an IQ test. The psychologist came back and said, oh, it's very unusual. Most people, their IQ is like this. Yours is like this. And I have no idea what it means. And I'm like, neither do I, that's why I came here. <laughs> uh, so, so it's like, that didn't help. The biggest eye opener, and I, I shared this with my manager once yeah. I, I learned it, was this particular specialist said to my ex, and there were the three of us in the room. Mm -hmm. She said, why does he struggle with making phone calls? You know, need to ring up about the electricity. He doesn't do it. Yes. He comes home and I mention it and he just grunts and walks off, type of thing. And the specialist said to her, I want you to stand up right here, there's only the three of us. Sing the first verse of the national anthem. Yeah. And she's like, uh, and he said, okay, sit down. You don't have to sing it. But that anxiety that you just felt is what I feel every time, or what Damien feels every time he has to make a phone call. And for her, it was like a light bulb moment. My manager at work who said, so all those times that I've been trying to get you to call people, <laughs> now understand. Um, but yeah, so little things like that were just light bulb moments um, that were just fantastic. For me, uh, having that diagnosis, yeah, it was massive. Um, it just helped me to know who I am in, in a way that I, I guess for 40 years I've been missing. I mean, I found doing this IQ test very rewarding and it did highlight for me the lows um, and there are points that I can go and work on. Mm -hmm. The way I describe that for myself personally is gaps in my skill set. So mm. some things I'm really good at, some things I'm really not good at. Yeah. Um, yep. Which was actually a video posted recently, gaps <laughs> on my skill set, and I actually graphed that exact thing where mm. some things are high and some things are low. I think trying to boost the points that are low for myself, because mm. uh, I would like to be a bit less of gappy and stuff like that, but still, yeah. um, I know what I'm good at. So good at. The, the theme for February um, is employment, and the theme for March is diagnosis. Do you have any advice for people who might be thinking of seeking a diagnosis? I think um, from seeking a diagnosis, it's worth, very worth it's it. It's worth it. Yeah, okay. it's worth it. If you, if you suspect, it's like, well, find out. Find out. Because okay. it's, it's, for me, so I, I, I have been in a relationship um, and things didn't go well purely down to the fact that I had no idea why I am the way I am. You're doing yourself a disservice if you don't know why you are the way you are. So from a, from a self-awareness perspective, mm. you would recommend Absolutely. finding out. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, um, and, and what about for anyone who's struggling to find a suitable job? Work is tough 
I think for anybody looking for a job, <laughs> whether you're on the spectrum or not, yeah, um, it's it's kind of one of the. I know with from 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 my area, um, web development uh, and and the like. We will employ you if you have experience. Okay. But if you don't have experience, how do you get? How it? do you get experience? Yeah. <laughs> so, that's always the conundrum. I think it, it, it's how do I get into this industry without having experience in this industry? Mm -hmm. Where can I begin? Um, so, if we make it maybe a little bit more specific, <clears throat> if someone is in the software industry and they don't have any experience and they're trying to get mm -hmm. in, do you have any any advice? Don't just sit at home playing computer games. <laughs> you know, maybe do something, build something. There's practical ways and people that you know that need help in certain things. So look for where you can help out. You don't always have to... Experience doesn't mean that you've been paid to build something mm -hmm. for somebody or you've been so, paid to do something. Yeah, so volunteer work mm. um, or projects or any kind of project. Also stuff, builds experience. It still builds your experience. Mm. Yeah, that's, mm. that's, that's good. Mm. Um, so we, maybe we'll leave it there. Thanks sure. for the interview today and no for sharing some of it, your story with us. Um, and I, there will be more Aspie interviews later this year. So stay tuned if you're looking to meet more people on the spectrum. Mm. Okay, thanks. Bye. Cool. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe for weekly content just like this one. If you'd like to get even more involved, you can join the discussion on social media or support me by becoming a patron. Finally, I value your time and you'll notice all my videos are ad-free, so please help me to cover what you want to hear by leaving me a comment and telling me what you think. So thanks for watching and I'll see you another time.